So 2012, how many people here have been to Neef? Up Northeast Astronomy Forum, yeah. Um, dangerous place. Don't ever go in there with an empty credit card. Um, not, a, not a good plan. And um, so I was there in 2012, and I was helping out at the uh, Night Sky Network booth, and Yeah, okay. All right, here we go. We're rolling. And I ran into a guy uh, named Mark Stobridge, um, who you might know from the New Hampshire Astronomical Society, and he was carrying around one of these. And I said, hey, what the heck is that? And he goes, uh, it's a library telescope. Um, and they came up with the idea that one of the best places for a telescope, you know, you do star parties all the time, right? People come in and look at M42 through your telescope. How long do they get? 30 seconds if they really want to hold up the line, right? Um, and then they move on to the next part, and they never look through a telescope again until the next time you do a star party. So the big advantage for this, according to Mark, and it's a very good idea, is that, hey, put them in the libraries and let people check them out for a week, and they can do whatever they want. Um, and it's come with uh, remarkable success. Uh, New Hampshire at the current time has, I think, 115 telescopes in service in libraries in New Hampshire. Um, and we did a conference a couple of years ago, uh, Mid-States region of the Astronomical League convention, and made it made a nice little profit, about a thousand dollars, in 2014. And we said, "Hey, what are we going to do with that?" And so I suggested the idea of using it to buy three library telescopes for local library systems. We have one big one in St. Louis County, big one in St. Louis City, um, and then we have another independent set up. And I said, "Why don't we just get uh, a telescope for each?" Um, and we finally twisted the arms of the society to think it'd be a good idea and the libraries would actually like it and they'd actually put it to use and it would, money would go to waste, etc. Sometimes that can be an issue. Um, and we took the right approach. I would have taken the wrong approach. Mine would have been to go to like the program director, you know, hey, this would be a cool program to implement, etc. Uh, we've got a gentleman named Don Ficken in our group and he's a business type. He's like, no, nah, bad way to do it. Go to the top. And so we worked out a good presentation for the program, here's how it would work. Here's the support we would give for the program. Uh, went to the our first meeting was with the, the head of the St. Louis County Library uh, program, and we did the presentation. We thought it went okay, and he calls us back four hours later and say, "I want 10." <laughs> Just the way libraries are, they got some sometimes some money somewhere, and um, or get somebody to donate for a project they consider worth it, and it took off. And so that, that's kind of our philosophy now is if you want to present to a library setup and once you get them in one in the area, um, everybody else is going to want one too. It's just such a uh, phenomenally popular program. I mean, where else can you go to check out a telescope and take it home for a week and it doesn't get destroyed um, and there aren't any real big issues, et cetera, uh, with uh, operating the telescope. And so we, we um, kind of got real popular. St. Louis County call, or St. Louis City calls back, so we want five. And when we presented at Kirkwood, which is an independent library, they said, uh, University City found out about it and said, no, we want one too. <laughs> and um, it became really popular. That was the first year. Um, and then the next they decided to do it again, um, and we ended up with even more. So let me tell you a little bit about the scope. It's an Orion Star Blast. I had a picture of it earlier. And by the way, Orion is really aware of library telescopes. Um, we order them 25 at a time sometimes, um, and so they're really, really on top of it. Uh, the nice thing about it is it's a real telescope. It does have a four and a half inch ap aperture. Um, it's a very sturdy mount. Um, we replace the two eyepieces because if you have to switch eyepieces, guess what's going to happen? Now, one of them's going to get lost. You know, even if you have a little bag for them, they're going to disappear. They're going to have thumbprints all over them. It's going to be a mess. So we replace the eyepiece with a Celestron 8 to 24 zoom, um, and then we make up a user guide. We have a plastic laminated uh, user guide for how to use the telescope and so on. Uh, and then there are a bunch of modifications, and that's that's kind of the fun part for this for the group that's putting them in the libraries. It's a really good time to do all the modifications. We even uh, simplified one thing. You could have a moon filter, but then you got to take the eyepiece out, screw in the moon filter. You're going to lose the moon filter. Easy solution, just make an aperture, off aperture, 
um, hole in the, in the dust cap and use that. So it cuts down the amount of light. Don't have to worry about having a moon filter. 20x uh, is the range up to 60x. Uh, so M42, most of your common objects are great. Jupiter is great. Uh, the moon is unbelievable, of course. Uh, and the views you get through it are, are just uh, really nice. And <laughs> it's portable. So here's how, here's how it works. The concept is uh, you check it out for a week. Uh, it was designed by Mark Stobridge, like I said. He's got multiple, multiple states involved. We launched our first one in November 2014 with 18 telescopes. And in May, by, by the time May rolls around in the next spring, uh, we had to do another 25. Um, and then, you know, more, more coming. And on March 16, we, we did enough to bring the total to, to 88 telescopes. So since fall of 2014, we've now hit all the libraries. If you look at a, a map of the St. Louis area, we've hit all the libraries in St. Louis County. They all have one at each branch. St. Louis City has got a lot. Jefferson County, which is southwest of St. Louis, is involved. St. Charles County is another group out there. They took over, and, and their, all their libraries have it. And then we also went into Illinois at Belleville and Edwardsville, et cetera. And the wider we go, the, the more phone calls we get. Hey, we want one. <laughs> um, so it just keeps expanding. So right now in Missouri, we got 72 telescopes. Illinois, we got 16. And that's since fall of 2014, right? Um, and New Hampshire, I think they started the program in, in 2008. Um, and we're now working on, with other groups, the other SLAS. Is there anybody here from the other SLAS? Hey, all right. Um, how's the progress going out there, guys? Where, where are you guys at on the program right now? Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. So we're the, we're the original SLAS, though, because we were founded in 1936. So <laughs> they're the other SLAS. Um, uh, of course, in Arkansas as well. And that's uh, that's you guys, right? Um, so we're, there are lots of people here that are kind of involved in the program. How many people actually are involved in a library telescope program right now? There's two or three of us. Okay. By the way, when I get done with questions, Wayne, raise your hand. I'll put you on the spot. Wayne can answer any question about a library telescope you want to know, as he's helped with the building processes, etc. So he's your answer man after I'm gone. So I'm not saying we do things on a big scale, but that's, a, that's after the delivery for the May 2015 setup. That's Don Ficken's garage. <laughs> um, they got a little full. Um, and then we took all the scopes and transported them in a couple trips over to the local high school uh, physics lab. Great place to do the build, by the way. Um, they let us borrow the lab for a little while. Um, we have subsequently done one this spring in an even better place. We did, uh, the library was generous, one of the libraries was generous enough to loan us a room for doing the build and all the modifications and stuff. And that's really popular because then the librarians get to see what we do, you know, directly and stuff. The, the science lab is pretty cool, though. Um, modifications. Let's talk about modifications. You have to patron-proof a telescope. Do you know what I mean by that? Yeah, OK. So some of the modifications, strings. And the string is short enough so that you have to have it all, all the way racked in before it'll go on. Um, cover. And there's Velcro on the cover, so you can stick it to the inside up here. And I'm not going to do that <laughs> this angle. Um, when this scope comes, it's got really nice collimation screws. Take those out <laughs> and replace them with Allen wrench type, uh, type bolts and stuff. Then when you adjust collimation, it'll stay for a while. Uh, the finder scope comes with a, it actually provides you with a, a button battery. Just you give that to somebody else because you're going to replace the, the button battery setup with a little installation of a two AA battery pack. It's got glued to the side, and it basically uses a little piece of rubber and two brass, uh, two brass contacts to replace the button battery inside. And so we now have two AA's to run this, which means, uh, like when I forgot to forgot and left it on Friday, um, it's still going to be going when it comes back, you know, a couple days later. Uh, so it's going to be good progress. The eyepiece is a Celestron 8 to 24 zoom. And what you have to do to the eyepiece is, um, you know, the, the barrel part that goes in the, in the focuser unscrews. Can't have that. Unscrew it, glue it, uh, put some glue on it, and put it back together. Uh, same thing for the rubber eye cup. Unscrew it, put some glue on there, put it back together so it doesn't unscrew, uh, et cetera, because people will actually take the barrel and accidentally unscrew the whole eyepiece from the thing. So. Uh, we do that as well. And then we get a little fanny pack, uh, buy them in bulk from uh, Walmart, et cetera. 
And in the fanny pack, they, there's a little constellation book that you can buy that uh, fits inside, uh, which is kind of nice. And then uh, we have a little instruction manual that's laminated you can put inside. And then, of course, you got to have the coolest part, um, headlamp flashlight with red lights. The only problem with this flashlight design, you could find, maybe find another one, is when you go to turn it off, <laughs> I like this one. <laughs> so either bury it or it's going to be really annoying to your friends. Um, but that's all what's in the book. And here's the little constellation book, too. So it's a nice little Audubon type book um, for all the constellations. And some people, when they set this up, will have like another folder that goes with it with maybe some handouts and other information or some star maps, uh, et cetera. So you can do all of that uh, without too much trouble. And then, of course, uh, when you're doing the build, um, you got to collimate all these scopes. So we, <laughs> we had a couple of members who just went up and down the hallway collimating telescopes. It's kind of fun when you uh, put the laser collimator in there and the dots on the ceiling somewhere because I missed the mirror completely. Um, so <laughs> collimation was, was always kind of a trip. Uh, there's the distribution so far. Uh, the one major problem is this is a, this is a popular setup. Um, one of the library telescopes in St. Louis County has a 98-person waiting list. That's 98 weeks before you get to use the scope. <laughs> and gee, I hope it's not cloudy. Um, so I, I got a feeling once this gets installed, you know, they're going to be wanting to add more telescopes, and that's what St. Louis County's already done. They're already up to 20 uh, for their setup. So, um, you know, we'll see how that see how that works out. Um, the other thing we do, and this is kind of important, I think, you get the relationship with the libraries going. Uh, we hold a star party once we release the telescope. Star party that um, patrons can come to. And, and by the way, when you do the build, um, build two or three extra scopes. We've actually got four extra scopes um, that we built that we keep, like this one, which are trainers, so that you can show people um, at a library star party how to use the telescope. So when it comes in and they check it out, they know how to use it. Uh, it's very very simple to use. We make it hands on, um, so they're actually in the library. Uh, if you can't look at something outside, you can, you know, uh, if somebody's got a nice shirt that, that has astronomical objects on it, they can go stand at the end of the hall and you can point it at them uh, or just put up a picture, et cetera. Um, and so we get they get practice in using the telescope. It's very easy. Show them how lightweight it is. Have them pick it up. Um, for transportation, it's very simple. You don't need anything fancy. Um, oh, did I accidentally press the button 20 times? <laughs> um, you don't need anything fancy for transportation. You just put it right up, and the seat belt goes right around it. So just put it in the passenger seat and strap it in. Um, and that's the best way to transport it. Some people have built cases and boxes and stuff. St. Louis County said, hey, we'll put it in a trash can. So you get a trash can that will actually fit in. And if you can't touch your toes, you're not getting the telescope out. And of course, if you're trying to get it out of a trash can, uh, you're going to grab it by the focuser and so on. So we just found that, forget the case, uh, pretty much. Um, we haven't had any problems with damage or anything. From, as people will see, will see belt it in. You tell them not to put it on the floor you know, or uh, the car or anything like that. And it works out pretty well. So when we do these star parties, they operate the telescope, find a few objects. Uh, it's both inside and outside. And, and if you do it right, you time it to start at dark and you have a, you have a quarter moon. You know, if you have first quarter moon, it's perfect. And this thing, when people look at the moon through this thing, it's just amazing. Uh, they, they're really, really uh, uh, down with that. So, um, And then you have a scheduling guide. Uh, the best thing, though, is get the timing and marketing set up with the library um, so that they, you can coordinate a, a PR release for it, um, you know, and get the libraries to promote the program. They will do all the promotion. Some of them will have a display for telescopes or astronomy in the library with a display about, hey, you can check out this telescope. and of course, the telescope's never were there. So, and the other thing that's kind of critical is to have um, volunteers that are going to help maintain the telescope in case there's any issues. So you need either the group or a coordinator, or I think New Hampshire actually designates a, a person to be responsible for a scope in one library um, to you know take a look at it if anything uh, needs to be looked at and so on. And you can also, if you're careful with the training for the librarians. You can train them to make sure the, the, the red dot finder is uh, in line and so on. It is adjustable, um, and it's pretty easy to just point it out the window at something uh, down the road a piece to just coordinate the finder with the, uh, with the scope and make sure it's in line. But 
other than that, we haven't had really too much issues. Rubber Eye Guard came off because we use our own glue um, for the eyepiece. Um, some finder, some finders have uh, sustained a little bit of damage. Do you know about anything else, Wayne? I think I think that's really about it. Um, and I guess occasionally a can camera bag. So tune-ups. There's all the parts. Um, it's out as, so it's very easy. All you need is a chair or a small table. Uh, set it up, or if you're a kid, you know, set it on the ground. Um, and we're doing at this point. We're, we've now set it up for a system where we're doing two builds a year. Um, one in, one uh, in the spring, one in the fall, and requests are due by a certain date. Um, and then we usually roll out within 90 days after that for the the next generation of telescopes to be distributed and stuff. Um, the cost on it's about 300 bucks, roughly, um, for all the modifications and equipment. 320. We, I think well, the, the libraries actually get charged like 325 thereabouts. Um, and you know, if you think about it, that's like 10 bucks, right? And so libraries will add to it. You know, it doesn't really cost them that much. A lot of times they'll find funding for it, friends of the library type thing, or some other organizations will help provide the funding. Uh, we seeded ours, of course, with with three donations. We do a couple donations each year. We've got that built into our budget, and we try to place those where the need is the greatest. Like the one library that had uh, um, had 98 requests, you know, get a second telescope in there to cut them in half. Um, that'll be helpful. Um, but other than that, um, special builds if you need them. And other than that, that's uh, pretty much about it. Questions? <laughs> what do you do about safeguarding um, from them pointing it at the sun? I mean, do you have like warning um, or something? Or? We make that that instruction extremely clear to the librarians, um, and they make it extremely clear to the patrons. They have to sign a release. And by the way, all the forms um, that you need, all the documentation, if you contact Don Ficken at our website, uh, and our website is slasonline.org, um, slash online.org. Um, and you're, can you put a link up for that at the meeting site somewhere? Yep. Okay. Um, and so if you if you hit the library page of our website, um, Don Ficken's contact information will be there, um, and you can just send something to library telescope at slashonline.org, and that goes right to myself and Don as well. Um, but yeah, we make it very clear in the in the training for the librarians. We do a, a separate a separate session for that. Then we do the star parties for the patrons. But yeah, I make it very clear that there's. Um, no looking at the sun. We also have a warning sticker right here on the um, on the the eyepiece too. But yeah, that, that's one of your first things you make clear. I was presenting this to an elementary school yesterday, and I made them raise their hands and say, "I will never, ever, 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 yeah. ever, about ten times, uh, point at the sun." The piece come out. Nope. So it's no. Uh, oh yeah, that's one of the other modifications. Take out the thumb screws, put them in with Allen bolts. Okay. <laughs> you know. So you can't take the eyepiece out. Yeah, it, it we we kid proved it pretty good. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's it's it really uh, has worked pretty well. They haven't had, had they haven't come back with any missing eyepieces or anything. But. Two things. What, what kind of feedback have you gotten from kids? What do you know? How many repeat customers do you get, and so forth? Well, repeat customers is a little tough right at the minute, just and, because of the waiting list. But okay. And and the other thing, have you looked at the Worldwide Telescope Program? Um, that's the one where you can access remote. Well, no, I mean you can load it on your um, on on any Windows computer. Mm -hmm. And but uh, one of the things I find about star parties is just like you said, they get a quick look and then they go right. away. The nice thing about having a program that they can download that this is all um, Sloan all images. So the oh yeah, whole, whole right. thing is a, a yeah. You can you can uh, tell I, take a I, picture and yeah. Well, if they look at something. You can find it on there and say you can go home and look at it and re find mm -hmm. out more about it. I, I always worry about how to get continuity with the interest that they show at a star party. Yeah. You lose it as soon as they are gone. Yeah. Well, the nice about it is that they can take it home for a week. And I don't know how many people here have people take pictures of the moon through their telescope when they come up at star parties. I'm done doing that a lot now. Boy, they eat it up. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, you can get brackets, but you can just hold them up. When I'm running my observatory programs with a bunch of high school kids coming in, they're really Really excited about taking their own pictures. So that's one of the things they could spend a week doing. Then you know, especially with you might be able to get Jupiter, but the Moon is really, really cool. So, 
So um, has uh, has Orion offered a good discount level on the scopes? We've gotten, yeah, we've gotten some prices from them. Good. And so we're, we're actually featured up. in a couple of catalogs now. <laughs> fantastic. They, they fantastic. like our program. So. I love the program. And um, you mentioned schools. I was, I was going to ask as well about um, have you thought about extending this program to schools? Um, we're sticking with libraries for the moment. Schools is a good idea. Um, and maybe in the school library or with astronomy classes, et cetera. Uh, but we haven't expanded that. There's a lot of schools around here. So um, I was going to have her next. Um, <laughs> or she goes crazy back there. Uh, but yeah, I, schools would be a great idea. But boy, that's that's a big jump, um, you know, in terms of just uh, quantity and stuff. So that that could be a that could be a bit of an issue. Do you have any information on the demographics of those who check out the telescopes from library? Of the what? Demographics, as in age groups. Oh. Um, Backgrounds, etc. The library might be able to provide that. I haven't seen that yet, but I'm sure the library keeps track of it. Um, so you might, we might be able to. Kind of, if you, we'll, I'll look into that and see if we can get something posted about um, who checks it out. Of course, that's restricted people over 18. Um, you know, that yet it's you have to be an 18, 18 year older to check it out. Uh, it'll, you have to sign like a little thing. Hey, I'm paying for a telescope if I don't bring it back, et cetera, et cetera. It will be interesting to see more or less demographics there. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know if it's uh, families with small kids or, you know, just I, I got a feeling it's a, a pretty wide demographic, so I'll tell you the truth. I'm, I'm puzzled. Do you, you, there are no concerns about theft or anything like that or claims? We had one that went missing for like uh, a month, but that got returned. Um, I mean, you know, you don't mess with the libraries, man. <laughs> so, so they, they I mean, actually they got your name, address, phone number, and everything else with the card, and you sign something, and by golly, if you lose there, it, you're paying for no it. There's no deposit though for the no, no. Check it out just like a book. Yeah, it's weird. We charge our members, who we know fairly well, you know, a seventy-five dollar deposit to get one of our scopes. And, like, really? The libraries is like, here, go ahead. <laughs> oh yeah, that's absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. I, I have to buy a few of those for my so my classes. Yeah. Let's say hypothetically, uh, my fledgling new astronomy club that we just started uh, wants to try to purchase two telescopes for the local library. Raise, and let's say we come up with 750 for two. That's what plenty. Happens, what happens next, or, or maybe um, what we'll happens next is you probably call Don Fick and, and get some documentation. Um, we have forms that the library can use for checkout forms. Uh, we have documentation for the little user's manual, which is uh, sorry I didn't bring it with me. It's a it's it fits in the panty pack, and it's laminated. Um, you know, uh, it's like a little spiral bound flip book that's got all the instructions for it. But all the documentation is available. So um, who best to talk to and what? Yeah, any um, on that? Don Don Ficken can hook you up the fastest probably. Um, so you can send an email to library telescope at slash online dot org. Oh, that's true. Uh, Jim, on the demographics, uh, one thing we're thinking about doing with ours is to uh, uh, have a survey monkey survey and put a little sticker on the scope and ask them after they've used it to take the survey. I don't know what, that, that might be interesting. what kind of feedback we're going to get, but yeah. it's, it's, it's in search of answers to some of the questions. That you know, and, and you might even, uh, librarians might even be interested in, in tracking that. You know, they might even actually do that for you. As far as the build and so on goes, um, we have uh, documentation that, and so does New Hampshire, about uh, all the modifications. Some people have tried putting an, uh, cutting a, a water pitcher out and just putting that over the over the back end of the tube for the collimation thing, and we decided not to go with that. And like I said, other people have done cases, but there's instructions for like the battery modification, you know, et cetera, et cetera. We've got documentation on all that too. And one of the people that can answer all of those questions is sitting right over there, Wayne Clark. <laughs> Raise your hand, Wayne. <laughs> Including, you know, we've got the stickers and so on, too. A comment and a question. The comment is, we uh, were out with a camper group doing a star show, and a lady walked up to one of the t C8, pulled out a flip phone, held it up to the eyepiece, and took a picture of Saturn. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. It works. Anyway, <laughs> uh, do you ever put anything like uh, uh, the, these uh, uh, lockering uh, materials on the set screws to make sure they don't come out. 
Um, you know, the, the Allen screws. We, yeah. Well, we like to be able to take them out because if we have to work with the IPs or something, yeah. We, yeah, we haven't done anything like that at all. But you haven't used any thread locker or anything? Uh, like we that. have, well, like on the on the eye guard for the IPs. Uh -huh. Yeah, we use glue for that, so that's not going anywhere. Yeah. Same thing with the barrel, you mm -hmm. know, where the, the one and a quarter inch uh, barrel, that, that can come unscrewed easily. And, the, and when they're twisting the barrel to uh, zoom the eyepiece, that can easily be, so we glue that too. Does that interfere with cleaning it? Uh, significantly? No, no okay. it's just the barrel of the eyepiece, so just make sure the eyepiece is all one unit. Very good, thank you. We can take it out. One more? Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> well, um, you can contact, okay, go ahead. You're buying so many of these, and, <laughs> and it would seem to me that you could, you could just ask Orion to make a library model for everybody and, and expand their market. They, they, don't, they don't have the time for these kind of modifications. Uh -huh. it's, uh, and they're, they're modifications you probably really wouldn't, wouldn't want in your telescope lineup. That, I mean, we, we do them, it takes us six hours, roughly, to do 25 scopes with a crew of about 25 people. Um, so it's, you know, it's pretty arduous. If they were going to try to do that to market it, the cost would be 500 bucks. You know, and plus, I got to say, um, when Don Ficken organizes a build, you know, and his wife makes chili, um, I'm there. You know, it's it's probably one of the best social uh, things for for an astronomy group to happen because people can you have to have no skill levels for a lot of it. You put the you put the kings on the collimation part and the mirror part, uh, where you make the adjustments to the mirror and stuff. But other than that, you know, putting the stickers on the scopes and things like that and doing all the other mods are, um, you know, pretty simple. And we just set up stations and people work the stations and then we have a good old time and party afterwards. Okay, well, thank you very much, Jim. That's an exciting. Yeah, yeah thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah.